Latitude is easy to measure. Longitude isn't. How do you measure latitude? Well, you have to look at the orientation of the sky to get that. Take the Earth in your imagination and take the axis of the Earth and run it outward. As you stand out on a country evening, it looks as if you're standing in the middle of a giant sphere. It's called the celestial sphere. It's an illusion. It's not real. It looks gigantic, and it looks like it's rotating around you, making everything rise and set. You can do the same thing on a nice, clear, sunny day. You have this blue dome over your head, the celestial sphere. It is an illusion. But let's make use of the illusion. As you stand in any location, there's a point directly over your head. The world's most venerable tool is a plumb bob. It's a weight on a string. It points directly downward, and it points to the center of the earth. If you run the string back in the other direction, it points to a point directly over your head. That point over your head is called the zenith. It's yours. Nobody else has your zenith. You simply point directly over your head away from the center of the earth, away from where gra gravity is directing you downward, and you locate your zenith in the sky. Then you take the axis of the earth and you point it out in both directions and see where the axis of the earth punches through the sky. As the earth turns on its axis, the sky will appear to turn around its axis and around two points in the sky called the celestial poles. The one above the north pole of the earth is the north celestial pole. The one under the south pole of the earth, or above the south pole of the earth, if you like, is called the south celestial pole. And as the earth spins around on its axis and its poles, the sky appears to turn around its own axis and around its poles, carrying everything along with it. Now, remember, it's an illusion. We know we're on the earth, and we know that that is the cause of the apparent spin of the sky. Now, if you stand on any point of the earth, it looks as if you're standing straight up. doesn't matter where you are. We're standing straight up here in, say, North America, and if you imagine your globe, well, the people in South America and Australia must be hanging on for dear life, trying not to fall off. But everybody feels that way. It's because gravity is pulling us all down toward the center of the Earth. So we'll stand on wherever you live. It appears you're standing on top of the Earth, and that causes the axis of the Earth to be oriented such that the elevation in degrees above the northern horizon, if you're in the northern hemisphere, always equals your latitude. It's the fundamental first rule of celestial navigation. If you look to the north and you look up by an angle equal to your latitude, you will find the north celestial pole, that point of zero rotation of the sky around which everything appears to be moving. If you look down in the other direction, of course, you would see the south celestial pole. But if you're in the northern hemisphere, the south celestial pole would be below the horizon by that much, and you can't see it. So the sky is spinning around these two points here, carrying everything along with it. Stars rising in the east, setting in the west. The stars, sun and moon, wherever they happen to be, if they are north of the celestial equator, they will rise in the northeast, set in the northwest. If they're south of the celestial equator, they'll rise in the southeast, set in the southwest. Only things that are exactly on the celestial equator will rise exactly east and set exactly west. Now, if you don't know your latitude, and if you know your stars, you can then locate the position of the north celestial pole by its position among the stars. You can then measure the elevation of that point above the northern horizon and determine your latitude. You can find your latitude simply by looking at the sky. Know where you are north or south. If you look at old maps, you often find that they're very distorted. Uh, and it looked like the map maker just wasn't very good. That's not really true. It's because they knew how to get latitude. Look at all the proportions in, in antique maps. They're fine in latitude. They couldn't get their longitudes. Longitudes are much more difficult to get than just the elevation of something. The longitude requires the use of a clock. Longitude differences always equal time differences. So if you want to get your longitude at any given location, you must know your time here and your time at Greenwich. Subtract the two and make the conversion from hours, 15 degrees per hour, from hours to degrees. That's a difficult thing to do because if you're in a wooden sailing ship and you set your clock at Greenwich and then it takes you two years to go around the globe, your clock isn't going to keep very good time. We couldn't get longitudes until we, till we had good seagoing clocks, which we didn't have until the end, toward the end of the 1700s.